Hello everyone, I'm Aaron Gasser, more commonly known as Ginger Ninja Trickster or GNT, and I'm honoured to be part of this Fight Back virtual training event. Now these are very difficult times and it has affected us all, but we are all in this together. I'm really proud of the brave first responders who are putting their lives on the line to save others all around the world. Please help us support them as we train together as a community of martial artists. If you would like to make a donation to the American Red Cross, you can click the Learn More button on Black Belt's Facebook page, which will take you directly to their donation page for our event. 100% of proceeds will go to the American Red Cross relief efforts supporting COVID-19 frontline responders. Now, I don't like to talk a lot about myself, but just so you know a little about me before we start our session, I have been training martial arts for over 15 years. I'm a third dan in ITF Taekwondo, a third in kickboxing, and a first in world Taekwondo. I teach in Wales, I do seminars all around the world, and I have taught celebrities as well. I'm a stunt performer and have worked on several movies, including Dublin Sir Elton John and Kingsman 2. Finally, I'm a YouTuber with over 1 million subscribers and over 600 million views. If you want to find out more, go check out my website, YouTube channel, or other social media. Okay, so today we are going to focus on fundamentals of kicking. I'll go through drills to help improve kicking, break down basic kicks for sparring and self-defense, and we'll hopefully have enough time to go through some more advanced techniques, which are not as effective for fighting, but are great for having fun and challenging our bodies. First though, we are going to do a very light fitness warm-up and a quick stretch. Right, so we're going to start by just jogging on the spot. When I say jump, I just want you to drive up your shoulders so you stay on the spot, and then land on the balls of your feet to absorb impact, and then go back into your jog. If you find that too easy though, what you can do is tuck your knees right into your chest, and then go back into your jog. So that's every time we're going to say jump. When I say dang, what you do is just bend your legs, put your hands onto the floor, and then just come straight back up into your jog. If you find that too easy, what you can do is put your hands down, shoot your legs back, drive your hips into the floor, and then push and pop back to your feet, going back into your jog. Right, so what I'd like you to do now is follow the commands that I gave to my two kickboxing black belt students and see if you can follow along. Okay, this was filmed before isolation, by the way. Are you ready? Jump! Dane! Dane! Jump! Dane! 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 Jump! Jump! Dane! 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 Jump! Right, that was great. Now we're going to do some jump spins. We stop what you're doing just for a second so we can work on our technique. When I say right, you're going to jump up. You should make sure your shoulders drive up. We're going to spin 360 degrees in the air, and then we're going to land back onto our feet facing the front. So 360 degree spin is one full spin. So we, so we finish where we started. Okay, so quick demo. I jump, I spin 360 degrees, and then go back into jog. I try and focus on a point in front of me, and then I turn my head nice and fast and get back to it. So this drill is really good for awareness and it's great for jump spin kicks and things like that as well. If you struggle with a 360 degree spin, what you can do is focus on that point still, jump and spin as much as you can, and then turn the rest on the grain, focusing back to that point, okay? So make sure these shoulders are driving up. We don't want to chuck them across, because if we chuck our shoulders across, then we'll travel in that direction. So we want to be able to control our spin, okay? Same when we're doing a kick. We want to control our spin when we kick, and we don't want it to be erratic or unpredictable, okay? We want to know where we're going and what we're doing. Okay, so when I say right, you're going to jump and spin 360 degrees over your right shoulder. When I say left, you're going to jump 360 degree spin over your left shoulder. Right, so again, following along with Alfie and Ellie. Ready, left, right, right, left. Try not to throw your arms across you or your energy will go in that direction, putting you off axis and creating an uncontrolled spin. So make sure the shoulders go up first. Okay, let's mix the, the jump, the down, the left and the right now. Jump, down, left, right. Jump, left, right. 
Right. Ding. Jump. Jump, jump. Ding. Left. Left. Right. Ding. And back to jog. Awesome. Now we're going to work on some upper body strength. We're going to do what I call walkaways. So I just turned to the side for you just so you can see. We're going to keep our legs where they are. We're going to put our hands down. This is a bit of a stretch as well if you'd like that. If not, obviously you can always just bend your legs and put your hands down. That's absolutely fine as well. We're going to walk out. We're going to press up and then walk back. Okay. Now if you struggle, you can bend your legs at the start. You can walk out. If you struggle with the press up, drop your knees down and do your three quarter press up, lift your knees up, and then walk back. Five walkaways, ready, go. Next one is the visa. Okay, so if we just go down on the ground, I'm gonna go sideways so you can see the technique. We're gonna push our abs into the floor. This is really important because a lot of people arc their back and a lot of pressure goes in your back. We wanna work our abdominals. So we're gonna push our abs into the floor. We're gonna lift our heels up. We're gonna lift our shoulders up off the floor. We're gonna lift and touch our feet. Okay, if we struggle with that, you can lift your legs already and then just try and touch as high as you can on your feet. Okay, and then back into a jog once you finished your five. Go. Nice. That's it. Looking good. That's it. Last exercise and my favorite one, we're going to work on our squat and tuck. Okay, so this is a squat for us. So I'm just turn sideways so you can see. I put my hands down, I shoot the legs back. I bring the knees right into my chest and, and my feet uh, underneath me and then I tuck jump as high as I can, okay? So we do it a little bit faster. So what we do is put our hands down, shoot back, spring in and up. Now, if you want to make it a little bit more easier, all you do is just do it a little bit slower or have a little gap in between your jumps. So you can come down, shoot back, rest a little second, get your body up, tuck jump and then go, okay? So five squat and tucks, ready, go! Shoot them in, boom. That's it, big jumps. Knees right up. And jump up straight even better. So drive those shoulders up. That's it, and then back jogging now, guys. Because we're going to put them all together. We're going to do five walkways, five v surps, five squat and tucks. Ready, go! Breathe, focus on the form, take your time. Looking good guys, that's it. Awesome, great biceps there. Remember as well, you can change if you're struggling a little bit, you can go back to the easier versions if you need to. That's it, big tuck jumps, remember straight up. Finish then, just back into your jog. Right, back into your jog for active recovery. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. And relax. Okay, so hopefully you kept up with them. If you didn't, I'm sure you'll keep improving with practice. Next, we're going to focus on stretching. Uh, now, I have full follow-along stretching routines on my YouTube channel, but if we did one of those today, this would literally eat up half of this session. So I'm just gonna pick out a few stretches today, but if you want a full stretching routine, head on over to that. Okay, step back one shoulder, twist your hands forward. Crossing in the center. Big circles. We don't wanna be doing this like we're in a foam box. And backwards. A little test of your coordination, swing your left arm forwards and your right arm backwards. 
Change, right arm forwards, left arm back. Hands on your hips, gently circle. Big circles, don't be shy. Ah, change direction, so the opposite way. Oh, this is lovely on my lower back. Okay, bring your feet in together. Crouch down, put your hands to the side. When I say straighten, all you're going to do is just straighten your legs, okay? Try to keep your fingertips on the floor if you can. Straighten. So if you struggle with this, what you can do is just grab anywhere you can on your leg and then just work your way down until eventually you get to the floor. You just hold this position. Breathe. And bend. If you can now, onto your knuckles. If you're a little bit more advanced, we can go to our palms. But again, remember these legs have to be straight for the stretch to work, okay? If the legs are bent, it's a waste of time. Okay, straight in. And bend. Okay, so like I said, I'm not gonna hold them for 20, 30 seconds. Why is this going to take up a long time? Right, what I want you to do now is just take your right leg out to the side. Have your toes pointed up towards the ceiling. What you want you to do is just lean forward slightly. I don't want you to come around. I just want you to be on top of your leg. Stretch down, just grab the ball of your foot if you can. If not, just grab anywhere on your leg. Work your way down until eventually you can get there. If you can get there already, what you can start to do is bend your arm. You can drop your elbow to your shin, or if you're a little bit more advanced, you can even take it to the floor. Okay, just remember that leg has to stay locked straight. Okay, that's really important. So just hold that position. Try not to come around again. Remember I said a lot of people like to do this because they're using more muscle groups. It's a little bit easier for you to chill. What I want you to do is target more of the back of the leg, the hamstring, and then we can be directly on top of it and make it work. Okay, turn your foot onto the side. Stretch down, grab the blade of your foot. Again, we're not coming around. Straight on top. If you struggle as well or you've got a bad knee, another thing you can do is just drop your knee onto the floor here. You might need to move your leg a little bit just to get that correct alignment. If you can though, just roll back to this position. Get that alignment and try and stay on top of that leg. Okay, so you're working on more of a crunch here rather than circling and coming around. Hold that position. I love these stretches because they work a lot of our, our kick angles. So this one was our front snap kick, our push kick, our axe kick. This one is more of our side kick, our hook kick, our turning kick. And now just for a little bit more difficulty, point your toes back towards the ceiling, turn your toes away, stretch down, grab in your heel. Relax, come back up, right leg in, left leg out. Lean forward slightly, stretch down, grab the ball of your foot. Again, you can drop this elbow down if you'd like to. Or if you're working lower or higher up your leg, then you can work your way down, eventually get to the ball of your foot with time. Turn your foot on the side, stretch down, grab the blade of your foot. Again, I didn't say earlier, but you can drop your elbow down with this one too. Just try not to creep around. I do a little bit with my left. Needs a little bit of work, my left side. My right one's always straight down. <laughs> Point your toes back towards the ceiling. Turn your toes away, but well, my left twist kicks a lot better. Swings and roundabouts, eh? Straight down, grab your heel. Drop your elbow down the opposite side on this one if you would like. And relax. Bring your legs back in, just sit down. Soles your feet together, gently bounce. The best stretch, everyone loves this one. It's the butterfly stretch. Okay, grab the outer edge of your right foot where you put your left knee pointing forwards. And what I would like you to do now is if you, when I say open, just extend that leg out to the side. When I say close, just bring it back in, okay? Try not to lean like this. What I like to do is keep that body in. So it's kind of the position we're thinking of kicks. We don't want to be 
leaning and lazy and, and leaning back when we do our kicks. So I like to keep the body upright if we can. But if you need it, it's all good. And again, this leg has to be locked straight. If you're struggling, you can grab, lower down your leg, and then work your way up until eventually you get there. If you're finding it easy, you can drop that elbow down to your shin. And close, grabbing the heel, open. Breathe, hold the position. And close, grab it as your left foot, open. Breathe, try and relax whilst you're in your stretch. Don't fight it. And close, grabbing the heel, open. Breathe, hold it. Again, like I said, we normally hold these stretches for 20 to 30 seconds. Kind of skimming over today, just to give you a little taster. And close, gently bouncing. Right, a little bit of a challenge for you. If uh, you're worried about falling over, you've got anything close behind you, just make sure you get a little bit more space or lean on whatever it is behind you. Hopefully it'll be a wall there that you can lean on. What we're going to do is tilt back on our butts, grab the outer edge of both our feet. When I see open, I'm gonna straighten both legs out to the side. When I say close, I'm just gonna bring them back in. Okay, you ready? Open. That's it, hold that position and breathe. Hold it, relax. If you struggle, what you could do is hold lower down these legs. Okay, close. Mm, I think some of you got that right there. Let's make it a little bit more difficult, okay? Open. Right, fold your left leg in. Keep your right leg extended. Left leg back eight. Right leg in. Right leg back eight. Slowly close your legs whilst keeping them straight. Slowly open. That's it, that's it. How <laughs> you doing it? And close, relax. Gently bouncing. Just a little bit of fun. <sighs> right, space your legs eight. Don't have to be too wide. Drop body down, just gently circling. When you circle, just make sure you're leaning forward and you're looking forward as well. A lot of people arc their back and they go into this position, or they look like a little bit of a bobblehead as they go around. What I want you to do is think about your chest going forward. That way then, we're gonna work our adductors, the inside of our legs, okay? Big circles, all the way out if we can. Change direction, looking forwards. And come up, relax. Gently tap the inside just to loosen them off a little bit. Okay. Go over to your right side now. Grab your right angle with your right hand. When I see you breathe in, just come up. When I see you breathe out, stomach, chest, then head, stretching down to your right shin. Okay? And the reason I say shin is because we work down our leg. Now, if you see my leg here, I know, very sexy. <laughs> but if we arc our back, we only get to our knee. Okay? And we've got a big, massive gap here. Why we always say stomach, chest, then head is because the stomach goes down first, look, here, then the chest, no gap, and then the head, and then that way then, I'm on my shin. Okay, so it's really important when you do this to focus on that. Why I always like to say my students because they think they always want to get to their head, so they end up doing head, head to the shin, so they end up all doing something like this, but the leg has to be straight. This is 10 times better than this. Okay, so just be patient and you'll improve with time and consistency. Okay, so stretching down. If you want to be a bit more advanced with it, instead of looking down at your, your shin, you can just constantly look forward because you're just striving for more success and work further down the leg.
Okay, breathe in, just come back up. Going with the left hand side now. Stomach, chest, then head. Stretching down to your left, okay? I like to look forwards just like I was saying on that last one. Try and breathe. Both toes point towards the ceiling. The legs being straight is the most important thing in this stretch. And then the form of stomach, chest, then head. So you don't damage your back. Okay, slowly come back up. We're going to do one each side today. Normally we would do two or three. But like I said, I don't want to eat up a lot of our time with the stretching. Okay, gently tapping the inside of our legs. Okay, hands in the center. We can go a little bit wider as well if we can. When I see you breathe in, you're just going to come up. When I see you breathe out, you're just going to stretch down as far as you can forward whilst keeping your toes pointing towards the ceiling. Okay, breathe in. And out. Now it's important, obviously, when we're stretching to keep looking forward so we don't act their back, like I was saying earlier, but also to hold it. If we don't hold that stretch, our muscles don't get used to being in the position, and then we don't get more flexible. So if we go in and out too quickly, we're not going to improve. Okay, and back up. Okay, so 20 to 30 seconds is what pretty much everyone advises, and it works, it works for my students, it worked for me. So hopefully um, it will work for you as well. Right, last one, just a little bit of work on our leg strength. Put your two hands in the center. When I say lift up, we're just gonna lift up. When I say put down, you're just gonna put your body back down, okay? If you struggle with two hands in front, put one hand in front and one hand behind. Okay, you ready? Lift up, I'm gonna do my two in front. And back down. Okay, those who can now, one-handed. Either one hand behind, which is a little bit easier, or one hand in front. Lift up, sit, hold it. You might want to be on your phone or something with the other one when you're drilling these at home. And relax. Yeah, but if you want to read a book, yeah, you can either, you can do it with no hands. Okay, so you read your book, you ready? Lift up. We push our heels into the floor and we come into this position. Read your book, my imaginary book at this, <laughs> this point in time. Okay, and relax. Okay, fold your legs in. Gently bounce. Stand up, shake your hands, shake your feet. Okay, so now we're going to work on two balance drills. Don't worry if you don't own a cool sentry pad like this. You could use a cushion or something similar from a range of house. Now we're going to do a front snap kick chamber first. I'm gonna lift my knee up, basically in a 90 uh, de degree angle. And then I'm gonna press the target on top, go to a guard position, and hold this position for 30 seconds. Sounds easier than it is, but if I obviously lean my body forwards or I tilt and wobble, then this is going to come down and land on the floor. If that happens during the time, I just pick it back up and then just get right back to it. If you can do 30 seconds or you're a bit more experienced, then you might want to do this drill longer at home, but just have a little bit of fun with it and see how, how long you can actually hold it there for. Right, so left knee up. Targets on top. Now, I don't want you to actually put the target here like this. i show you. This is cheating. You can kind of hug it. Stay there all day. <laughs> yeah. What I want you to do is put it more to the end of your, your knee here. So when it's resting, it's a little more difficult. Now, if you have a little wobble up, it's going to go. And that's what makes it a bit more challenging. So try and do that. Right. On your left knee. Left knee up, sorry. Ready. 30 seconds. Go. Oh, this is weird trying to look at you, but I shouldn't be looking at you because it's actually putting me off balance. I normally look a little bit higher to keep my back straighter. So relax, hold that position, can have your guard up. I'm going to be focusing a little bit more on my timer though for me. That is 20 seconds already. Hold that position. Five seconds left. As soon as I start looking at timer, I start wobbling up. And time. So that was 30 seconds. All right, now we're gonna do the same with the other leg. Now I'm just gonna use the cushion instead just to show you. It's very similar if you just got one of those at home instead. 
All right, I'm gonna lift my right knee up. 30 seconds, ready, ready, and whoop, whoop, go. That's it, could do, don't do crack here, I'm, jo I'm joking. <laughs> here, looking at you, it's messing up my balance again, look slightly higher, look in line is the best way to keep your balance. A little wobble a little bit, use your stabilizing muscles, it's really good for leg strength. Just getting that good balance when you're kicking, very good for doubles as well. Or different transitions, just being able to control your body weight as you lift your leg. And, believe it or not, that is 30 seconds. Time goes so fast when you're speaking through it, okay? Okay, next one, we're gonna work on our side kick chamber. Are you ready? Left knee up, get my timer. And go. I'm gonna try not to look at this, because if I look at this, my balance goes. So I'm gonna guess when we're close to the 30 and then look back. Otherwise the balance is pretty solid. Sit, it, focus. Can bring the knee in close to the chest. Gonna make it a little bit more difficult. It's 25, oh, as soon as I look at it, look at that. <laughs> Break all my balance and posture. And time, 30 seconds. Great, it wasn't too bad though. Only glanced at it once. <laughs> right, right leg. Ready. Lift your leg up. Pushing on and go. Hold, bring the knee in if you want to make it a little bit more difficult, a bit more challenging. Focus, oh, thinking of looking at it, maybe wobble then. 10 seconds. <laughs> Sit, hold it, come on, we can do it. Oh, a little bit tired today myself. Normally I do a minute, minute and a half these, I'm struggling myself today. And time, oh, that was a bit longer than 30 seconds, sorry. <laughs> right, so try and grab a chair or something similar if you can range your ace, if not, you can do this in the air, it's absolutely fine as well. What I want you to do is chamber for a front snap kick in the middle of the, your chair or wherever you got. Extend a front snap kick over the top, fold in, and then bring your leg back down. Do that another two times, so we make three. Extend, fold, and down. One last time, extend, and back down. Maybe we could hold it longer. I'm rushing because there's a little bit of a more difficult one after this, and plus we haven't got much time. Right, now we can do our left leg, same thing. Lift knee up, extend out, fold back in, and down. Again, two more times. Fold in, and back down. Last one, lift up. Extend, fold in, and back down. Now we're going to do three times with a side kick. So again, center of the chair, lift your leg up, work on that alignment, fold in, and back down. Hold it a bit too long there, you can hold it a, go over a little bit quicker if you want, that's fine. And back out. So what we're looking for is heel, hip, and shoulder all in line. So we get that good alignment ready for our side kick. Last one. Lift up, and eight, fold in, back down. And now left side, focusing on the same thing. Extend over, fold in, and back down. Last one. Awesome. Okay, now back to the front snap kick chain. We're gonna chamber it in the middle, but this time we're gonna extend out to the side. Then we're gonna loop over to the other side and back. That's one. And two. And last one. Three. Now we could do this a little bit longer to make it a bit more challenging, but I wanna steamroll through this today and you can easily drill these a little bit longer in your own time. Same thing with the left, knee up in the center, go to this side, over the top, back, 
the other way, over the top, back the other way, last time, whoa, my legs are so tired, I've been training every day, and I've been started doing weights three times a week, so my legs are shot, <laughs> anyway, now we're going to do the same thing with the side kick, ready, here, over the top, one, as we come back, two, and three. Left leg, my hips are not as tired, it's my quads that are shot if you haven't noticed. <laughs> okay, starting from this side, over, one, And two, and three. Now you could do those for 10 reps. You could do a 45 second drill or something similar. If I was doing like figure eights, which is probably is more difficult than this, I'd be looking for a minute, a minute and a half when my legs are not shot. <laughs> so have fun, enjoy them. Um, try and uh, look on my YouTube channel for some other leg control drills. Okay, so let's go through one to four kicking for sparring. Now, even though it's called one to four kicking, there are actually only three different kicking techniques. A side kick, a turning kick, and a hook kick. But we repeat the turning kick twice, one to the body and one to the head, to make the four count. The reason we do this, if Bob was in the same stance as me, if I had my right leg in front, this is him having his right leg in front, I'm just gonna go in range to make it more easily demonstrate, and this is actually how we're gonna do the drill in a moment as well to make it easier for you. We're in range, we're just gonna lift. Number one would be the side kick. That's our main tool, that's our bread and butter. Two would be a turning kick to the body. Three would be a hook kick to the head. And then four would be a turning kick to the head. So that's our four count. Now, as you probably already noticed, we're doing these from a side stance position. Now, a side stance gets a lot of flack. And rightfully so if you're talking about it at close range, because if I had a side stance at close range, let's say it's this range, my jabbing hand is not as strong, it hasn't got a lot of distance to travel. Yeah, it's closer, so it'll hit faster, but it won't be as strong. So then I'll get overwhelmed with someone that's more square punching. The backhand is more difficult to strike with, I'll have to distort my body or change my stance beforehand to get there, which takes time. Also, if I'm defending any takedowns, if it's an MMA, then it's gonna be very difficult to turn my body and sprawl and shoot. Also, if we've got no rule, if we've got no rules with the leg kicking, then we get our legs taken out as well at close range. So this is primarily for having longer range, okay? I wouldn't do a side stance at close range. In obviously more light semi-contact sparring, you can get away with it a little bit more. You can go more mid-range with it as well. But what I do recommend is if you think of your front stance, being at your close range and then kind of a hybrid in between and then your side stance, that's probably the best way I'd think of advancing uh, towards an opponent when it comes to the distances. So the closer they get, the more you end up squaring up, okay? One advantage it does have at close range though, which I'll just quickly uh, brush upon. If I, had, if I was in a side stance from here, yeah, I get overwhelmed with hands, but I'm in a position where I can easily spin kick or jump spin kick in this case to, to create the, the distance I need for it. Okay, so it has a little bit of an advantage, but a lot of cons, okay, at close range. So yeah, don't advise a side stance at close range. However, at long range, side stance is your best stance, in my opinion. And the reason why is we've got our longest tools, especially the first one, which we uh, did earlier, the side kick. Our side kick is our bread and butter. It keeps everything in line, keeps people away. It's very good at long range, very useful tool, okay? Um, also, if we get used to the side stance, then we can lift like we're doing a side kick every time and then change it to the other kicking techniques to confuse our opponent. Put them in a bit of a dilemma. You know, we lift, we smash them with a side kick. They go, oh my God, that side kick was powerful. They put their hands there maybe to block it because they're scared of it. And then all of a sudden they drop their hands a bit lower and then they open up for the hook kick or turning kick. Then I hit you with those. And then they're like this, they're playing a guessing game, okay? So if you get really good with your legs, you can definitely use this in MMA. There's a lot of fighters that do, yeah? So there's a lot of proof out there for you. You see uh, Kung Lee used to do it. Um, 
you had, you've got Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, you've got Michael Venom Page, a lot of background in sport karate kind of systems as well, which have a, a similar, similar thing to ITF Taekwondo and kickboxing, okay? Now we do use our hands as well, we punch to the face, so it's not Olympic Taekwondo. So we tend to, if we were, let's say uh, we'd kick and we were advancing in, we wouldn't stay in this position. We would end up turning our body ready for going into hands, okay? Especially, obviously, punch into the face. In Olympics, they can only punch to the body, and they, they tend to mostly, I don't know, stay, stay in a bit of a different stance. It's not really my domain. Anyway, at long range, we're working on our four count. But just for now, I, this is the range I would like it at. But just for now, to make it a little bit easier for you to digest and get used to if you haven't done it before, we're going to go closer, and we're going to go in range. What I mean by in range is not so close to him that you can kick him. Close enough that you can just about kick him. Okay, so from here, if I lift, look, I can hit him. Like hit slightly through the target. That's, that's my goal. If you don't have a target, don't worry, you can do this in the air. The main thing we're looking for as we lift and kick now is we're not taking a step with the back foot. We're not telegraphing. If I did this, the opponent could see a little bit of a movement and then they can move out of the way, they can counter, they could do something. Okay, if I don't give that telltale sign, it's going to be very hard for them to read me and read what I'm going to try and do. Okay, so from here I push into the back foot and that way then I've got more, bod more body weight onto this leg and then I can lift the front leg and kick. There's less of a telegraph than me stepping like this. Also if I step, he sees this, he can hit me and I'm out of balance whilst my feet are together. So I push into the back foot, I lift, I side kick. Okay, number two, exactly the same push and then I go to my turning kick. Number three, because of the range now is a little bit different, if I lifted and I tried to hook kick now, you can see, see how that's a little bit too far away from me? It's because of the angle, because that body, it has the length it can reach, but as soon as I go higher, it's too far away. So what I have to do for that one, most of the time if I keep the same range, I have to just do a little shift, okay? Now, I like to say lift and shift, because if you think of it that way, you won't take this step beforehand, okay? So think of lifting your leg, and then shifting in to that hook kick, and then reset yourself to get that same distance away. Number four, we have to do the same because if I do turning kick now, look, it's just in front. So what I want you to do again is lift and shift in slightly. You guessed it, that's what we're gonna end up doing for all four when we move further away, okay? And if we have to move even further away, we try and work on a better lift and shift. If not, then we end up doing more of a skipping technique, a cat and mouse style. But for now, we're going to be at close range, lifting, and hitting, and then we get to the last two, you might need to shift a little bit. Okay, so that's your four count. Before we do the whole drill though, I'd like to break down the stance and each technique in a little bit more detail so you have a better insight and hopefully a little bit more understanding when you come to throw each technique during the drill. Now, if I was to explain every single point, let's use Psychic for example, I've got a tutorial on my YouTube channel that's 10 minutes long and that's not explaining um, attacking and defending with it. So, what I'm going to try and do today is focus on more of the key points for you and if you want to know more of the intricate details then head on over to my YouTube channel and check it out. Anyway, let's quickly break down our side stance. If we go to a ready position where we are shoulder width apart and our feet are already parallel, then I recommend going a little bit wider than that. Normally when I have my side stance I'm about a shoulder width and a half, um, but anywhere between a shoulder width and a shoulder width half is Normally a really good side stance. If you go any wider than that, then that means it's going to be very difficult to lift and kick off your lead leg, especially off the spot. But also it's going to be very hard for you to, to move quickly. And if we're not efficient at moving, then it's a problem when it comes to fighting. So anywhere between a shoulder width and a shoulder width half is, is normally a good side stance. If it's any shorter than that, we've got a very weak base. So if we get hit, then it's very easily for us to lose our balance like we talked about earlier. So, normally I'm a shoulder width and a half kind of guy. Yeah, you might be a little bit less, it's completely up to you. If I turn sideways now, I'm looking for my hip to be in line with their hip if they're also in a side stance, okay? Our hands, me personally, at the, if I'm further away, I'm a bit more experienced, so I like to have my hands down. There's several reasons for that, and you might say, why you got your hands down, you get hit in the face. One, you think you can hit me in the face. If you think you can hit me in the face, you're gonna to go to hit my face. You go to hit my face, I'm already ready for you to hit my face and I came to you and I hurt you, okay? So I'm, I'm luring into my game, that's the idea. 
Um, also, it's very efficient for spinning because you have a lower center of gravity, so it's easier for me to spin kick. Also, <laughs> if, the, if you're far away, we've got that range, then I've got more time to actually lift my hands up. So if you come in with something that catches me a little bit off guard, more than likely I can actually get my hands up in time. Yes, I'll be a bit on the back foot, but I might be able to uh, create an angle or a way out after that, okay? So yeah, there's advantages, there's disadvantages obviously of having your hands down, but there's some advantages too for you. Uh, some people uh, will prefer to have their hands up, especially if they're a little bit more inexperienced or they're against a more aggressive opponent that's they're very skilled, they'll, they'll have their hands up pretty much straight away. I like to have my hands down and then if I get more mid-range then that backhand will come up and I'll go more into my Philly shell, which is a very strong defensive position. Anyway, if I got closer to my opponent then, like I was saying earlier, we end up squaring more up and going more to our fighting stance and having our hands available in our top guard. Okay, right. So, that is our side stance. Hopefully you're in a nice comfortable one now. Now I want you to be a, a nice uh, range away. I don't want you to lift and shift. I want you just to be able to lift and go straight into that technique. You might shift a little bit with the momentum. That's fine. What I mean is you're not traveling, deliberately traveling with it, okay? If you're, if you're doing it just to get a little bit more power, that's all good. You're just trying to drive through. But what I'm looking for is you can already hit the target, okay, with that side kick. Now with this side kick, what I want to do is lift it up straight and go straight in with that side kick. I don't want to push this shoulder forward because if I do that, then what's going to happen is it's going to break the alignment of my side kick. I'm going to favor more of the ball of the foot and I'm going to be favoring this side of Bob. And that way then, if he gets used to that, he's going to commit to moving this side and then catching me with a counter or a technique moving that way. Exploit, exploiting my inefficiencies, basically, okay? You could also treat it more like it's gonna be a turning kick then, because if it's going with a ball of the foot, you could treat it very similarly, and you could counter with spin kicks. The spin, spin back kick is a classic counter for the, the turning kick. That's probably one you would do is if I, if I was favoring my side kick over in that direction. If I uh, tilt the back hip in, if I push the back hip in, then the hip goes offline this way, which means I'm favoring this side. So if I go with the side kick this side, again, I have a, the same issue. I'm going offline and he can exploit that inefficiency. He already knows and he can favor this side then to counter me. Okay, so I'm, I'm making his life easier. Yeah, he's, he's easily gonna get a counter on me. So what I wanna try and do is have this leg lift up, boom, and go straight in. Now see how, how direct that is? I think a little bit of a shift, a shift on there. But if I, if I just lift and go in, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm looking for is, is that alignment, all right? Now, that's very hard for somebody to get past. They have to work for it. He'd have to try and get his movement to go one side, draw me into thinking that's the alignment. I commit to it, and then he breaks the alignment. That's how he would get me if I had a very good side kick, okay? But we've got to have a very good side kick to begin with for him to do that, okay? So we're forcing him to play our game if he's having to do movement as well because we could guide him into a position that, where we want him to go. Gets a bit complicated, but hopefully some of you understand. Anyway, with the side kick, if you are lifting up straight and you've got great alignment, everything is going straight there. Awesome, amazing. There's still a mistake you can make though. And the mistake is either committing too much with the side kick and having your body weight drive forward. So if I didn't hit Bob with it, for example, I'd lose my balance and drop forward. So this is where when you train, you've got to hit things. And I love hitting things but also you've got to hit the air or miss. Because if you don't get used to that, when you're fighting an opponent, you'll always be used to hitting something. And then when you miss them, it'll be like, oh, what happened there? And all of a sudden you've got counted. All right? So don't commit too much going forward or have your body weight dropping into the technique. Yes, it might make it a little bit more powerful, but it's not efficient. If you miss, you're gonna get counted. You're gonna pay the price, okay? If, if I'm leaning back as well, that's also a problem. Because if I lift back and I've got something uh, that's strong and sturdy there, or even if it's a person running at me, then when I kick, that means I'm going to rebound off. Okay, the energy is going to go into my leg, and then my balance is already off, so it's going to amplify the balance being off, and then I'm going to fly over. So if I tilt back a little bit, Bob's not going to send me crazy far, but if it was a person coming on to me or moving forward, then it definitely would. So if I just lift now and lean back, you can see that I bounce off slightly. Okay? Exaggerating a little bit more for you, but you get the idea, right? Okay, so what I'm looking for is when I do my side kick, I'm lifting, 
I'm keeping that alignment and I've got my center of gravity in control. Like, boom, if I hit him, great. If I miss him, great. I can, I can do something else or I could double. Yeah, whatever we're, we're, uh, what, what we're searching for really. Yeah, sometimes I already know I'm not gonna hit someone with the first kick and I'm actually setting them up for the second one. So it depends on your opponent, it depends uh, your intent, okay? So moving on to number two, the body turning kick. Now, if we're in our side stance position, we can't just lift and throw a turning kick because it won't reach uh, the side of the opponent. It will go in front and then to the side. So you might scuff your toes and move across, but it's not gonna get the angle we want. The knee has to come around to the side slightly to reach out. Now it's not gonna be as powerful as a rear round ace so or rear turning kick, of course, but it is gonna be enough to stun them and then maybe us to follow in with their hands or just to keep them at bay and just say, look, you step there, I'm gonna hit you. You know, just give them that little warning to keep that range. But what I want you to try and do, instead of dipping this uh, hip and shoulder kind of forward on the backside to, to get that angle for the turning kick, which would be quite efficient, but if we give instead the intention that we're lifting up straight, again, like number one, like the side kick, okay? And we've made them fearful of that side kick. If we lift like this, what are they thinking it's going to be? Another side kick, all right? So I lift it, I make them fear that side kick, it's a feint, okay? It's an invitation for them to defend already. As soon as I lift, oh no, that side kick's coming again. So they might go a little bit tighter with their arms. You can creep around the back, maybe get this uh, turning kick under here somewhere. Yeah, maybe if that's too tight, maybe they've got a guard like this, then maybe you go up high instead, okay? With the other two techniques that we're going to do. But I want you to give that feint or the, the look or the intention that you're gonna throw a side kick again. And then once you give that look, then change it. That way then it's more likely to work, okay? If I dip and turn, I'm already telling them that I'm pretty much picking that turning kick or maybe the backhand if I'm opening up. There are other techniques, but they're the main ones they're gonna be uh, really weary of from that position. If I also do this, they might even take a little risk. They might think, okay, at least I can ride that. The side kick's very difficult to get past. So if they try to come straight at the side kick, psh, they're gonna be knocked backwards, okay? But if it's a turning kick, they can take that shot. Yeah, it might, it might hurt a little bit, but then they're thinking, right, I'll get forward and I'll score my points with the hand, especially if it's continuous. These points, different story. If it's at MMA, then they'll definitely take that opportunity. They'll think, right, yeah, I'll take that little tap of a, a rain ace kick and I'll move in and I'm gonna smash you with my hands, okay? So it's a little bit of a different intention. This is this would be mainly for obviously longer range and it would be to stun. If you're doing this MMA, it'd be more of a, a feint. Like let's say you, you pretend to flick and then you might come over with a backhand moving off the line or something like that. But for like the semi-contact sparring, you can sell it just like it's gonna be a kick. And then again, if you need the hands afterwards, you got that too, just from that. Okay, so lifting, lifting like you're gonna side kick and then changing with that rain. It's a little tiny shift in my part there because I'm thinking about attacking someone, okay? Right, so it's very hard to get used to, but try and lift it as if it's coming up like the side kick and then change. Don't already deliver it across because you're already telling them what you're going to do. Right, number three, I'm just gonna quickly turn Bob so you can see what part of the face I'm striking. Also, um, in light semi-contact sparring, you can't hit the back of the head, so I don't wanna be demonstrating hitting the back of the head. Now, I wouldn't be, because if they were in the side stance, they wouldn't stand like this. They are gonna have their head turned. So more than likely, I'm gonna be hitting them on the side of the face. But anyway, I'll just turn Bob, just so you can see me hitting him on, on the face instead. Right, so we go to our, our position, our side stance. We're gonna lift again, just like number two we did for the, for the turning kick. We lifted straight like we we're gonna do the side kick. And then we went into the turning kick. This one, we're gonna lift like we're gonna do the side kick, but then we're gonna lift up and go into our hook kick. So give the intent or the feint as if it's gonna be a side kick, and then go straight up into the hook kick instead. Now what's great about this one, and I have a lot of success with the hook kick. One, a lot of people don't expect you to throw the hook kick. They always uh, thinking you're gonna throw the turning kick or, or the side kick because it's a lot easier to do. Um, but also, when they do the side kick, if they do shrivel in, they'll normally go a little bit lower with the hands, even if, even if it's not too much, let's say it's even just that much. 
it excels and they'll bring this hand in tighter and then it makes it easier for me to come over the top and get that hook kick in. If they've got a guard up there as well, sometimes I'll do a little bit of a hybrid version. I'll do a, a hax kick, okay, a diagonal downward kick, if you want to call it that. Um, and that's very good also for people that lack the flexibility in the hips because you can use a little bit more your hamstring and more muscle groups to, to be able to do that kick as well. So what I'm talking about there is that instead of going horizontal and going across with the hook kick, we end up kind of looping it almost as if you're going to throw an outward crescent kick, but you're just going diagonally downwards with it instead. That way then it could loop over the guard, but also it's easier on the, on the hips for you. Okay, so I lift and then this leg comes out to the side after I sell this intention. Again, I could dip the hip back this way this time and just throw the hook kick. But if I do that against an opponent, now there's not many techniques I can do from here. I'm either going to spin, yeah? I'm going to hook kick, or I might try and side kick with the heel a little bit, but then I'm favoring that side like we talked about earlier. So, you don't really wanna sell and tell them you're gonna do this unless you've got a, a, an ulterior motive. If I do this deliberately and then I spin kick on you, or I do this to make you move, then yeah, it's good. But if, if you're not meaning to do it and you're letting them know what you're gonna do, then it's a problem, okay? So, try and lift like you're gonna do the side kick, sell it like it's gonna be a side kick, boom! Go into that hook kick instead, or the diagonal downward if they've got a good guard at the top, if they've got more front stance, and uh, you'll, you'll see it work a lot more and you'll be more successful with it. Okay, these are talking more about single techniques. We could even take these going into double, so I could throw the side kick actually to the body to really draw it, or actually just to smash and glue the hands there, and then I could come up top with the hook kick doing doubles. But just for now, we're talking about singles. Okay, I've turned him back from number four. This is the high section turning kick now. Again, I want you to give the intention that you're gonna be throwing that side kick. Um, and instead then, you're gonna lift the knee up higher, bring it around, and hit to his face instead. Now, you could sell the intention of going up high and then dropping it down low if someone got used to you throwing the high section kick after the side kick as well. So there's loads of little uh, reads and tells you'll have to find out who you're sparring and that way then you can be a bit more diverse, change it and, and you know what will work against different opponents. That's why you know a lot, a lot of opponents that never meet, you see the first couple of minutes they're just trying to suss each other out, they're trying to get the range, they're trying to realize what techniques they're going to throw, what kind of habits and, and mistakes they have and then the fight usually gets more interesting as it goes along because they're starting to pick each other apart. So we're lifting our leg as if it's going to be the side kick again, and then it changes to that turning kick. Don't turn the hips and go straight to the turning kick because you're letting them know, just like number two, but this, this time obviously it's, it's high section instead of um, to the body. So again, lifting here and then going to that rain out. Now it might not look um, as great actually from the side, I didn't even think of that, but if I just move in for a second, I'm doing this towards you. If number one is boom there, number two I sell as if it's gonna be that look. It's only a minor difference. For the hook kick, we're lifting here, and then I go into there. For the top turning kick, I'm lifting, and then I go into there. So I'm giving the intention with each one that I'm going to go straight, and then I'm changing it. So I'm trying to confuse you. And then if you if you're going, oh, he's gonna throw the turning kick next, and then I throw the hook kick, then I go back to side kick, I go to this. And then you're just like this with your arms. And if you get good at this, you're gonna put your, your partner or your opponent in a total dilemma, okay? Once we add double kicks into that equation as well, it gets even more interesting. So the more skilled you get at using um, these four counts, then the more we can play with it. Okay, so that's one to four kicking, explained in pretty decent detail for you. Um, I'm sorry that it took so long, but I want you to get more information than me just demonstrating practical work. I can show off and do loads of different fancy kicks, but what I want you to get from this is a little bit of knowledge, hopefully, or if you already know this, at least it just uh, reassures you that what you're doing is correct. So, what I'm going to do now is just quickly go through um, this drill in two ways, and then we're going to move on because we're running out of time quite fast. So, first one I'm going to do is just on the spot when we were drilling, okay? So when I say one, we're just gonna go side kick to the body. One, 
When I say two, we're gonna go body turning kick. Remember, lift it, lift it like you're gonna do the side kick. Two. When I say three, this one you might have to shift in a little bit for. I want you to go for the high section hook kick. You ready? Three. Again, lifting like you're gonna side kick. And on four, you're gonna go for the high section turning kick. Four. Okay, so I'm shifting on those last two um, because of the, the range. Even though I'm close enough for the side kick, obviously if I keep that same range, I can't reach with a hook kick or turning kick. So I have to shift in a little bit, okay? Right, once you've got that down, drill it as many times as you need. And I do recommend just using your best leg first before you move on to the left. It's the one you're mainly gonna use in sparring. But also, if you get it decent on your, your best leg, you can always use it to help teach um, your weaker leg. So, now I'm just gonna move a little bit further away. What I'm looking for now is there's no movement in this back foot. If I do, it's because I'm tired or I need a little bit more practice myself. <laughs> so when we're here, I'm lifting and shifting. I'm not going to step with this foot first. We're not doing any skips, okay? We can do skips, they're quite efficient. Yeah, we can do skips, but our intention is to lift and shift now with this range, okay? So when I say one, we're gonna do the side kick still, but we're out of range and we're gonna lift and shift into range. So one. On two, we're gonna throw the body turning kick. Two. On three, we're gonna throw the high hook kick. Three. And on four, we're gonna throw the high turning kick. Four. Okay. Now, if you notice there, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking more about if they're actually going back, but I could do this drill, and this is why I've got these on as well, is because I'm thinking about advancing, attacking, and, and retreating, and I was gonna do them in different ways for you. Um, so what you could do, especially with the hybrid hook kick, for example, you could go into here and go straight into your hand combos, okay? You could have a side kick which you're just solid and you're keeping them away. You could have a side kick where you're advancing and you're going into them. So you can drill these techniques uh, more to suit you and how you fight. If you want to obviously do it for attacking or countering, you could even side kick and then let them come onto you and then they move onto your, your back kick or jump back kick, things like that. So the more you drill, obviously the one to four count, the more you can start to play with it. Me personally, I like to go on to the doubles as well. So if you want to do that, then you can. That's good for uh, fainting, getting the guards come down because you can even obviously hit. So it really draws that guard down because they know if they don't move that guard, they're going to get hurt. So they bring their hands down. You might even clip them with that side kick slightly and then you've got top for the hook kick or the turning kick, and then you, you get a really clean shot. So I'm a big fan of going in, into the doubles, especially for, for Taekwondo. You'll see uh, Wonderboy Thompson do a lot of double pumps. Does them with side kick, does them really well. And the reason he does uh, the double pumps with the side kick is because the person wants to brush the side kick across so they can get in. And then what he does with that feint, he gets that hand to come in. And by the time they've moved that hand, boom, it's too late. The second one's coming in on you now. Or if you change the kick, he's got the open areas. So. It's a really good tool to have if you're a decent kicker or if you want to build up to being a decent kicker. Um, get this first though, and then build up into your doubles. Okay, so I hope you enjoy going through those. When you have your lift and shift at range, you would then add it to your natural bounce or fighting rhythm so you could disguise the techniques more efficiently and hopefully be able to land them on an opponent. I was going to go through the tornado kick and the jump spin hook kick, including the Van Damme version. But unfortunately, we've run out of time. But if you would like to go through those or loads of other different techniques, then head on over to my YouTube channel. Also, here's a few clips of some of the stuff I get up to. Okay, so unfortunately we have reached the end of our session. If you would like to see more of my content for free, head on over to my YouTube channel, Ginger Ninja Trickster, and you'll find detailed tutorials on stretching, kicking, flips, tricks, and much more. Please don't forget to donate if you are in a position where you can. Remember, you can click the Learn More button on Black Belt's Facebook page, which will take you directly to the American Red Cross donation page for our event. 100% of proceeds will go to the American Red Cross relief efforts supporting COVID-19 frontline responders. Thank you for joining in with this class. I hope you enjoyed it. I wish you all the best. Stay safe and well. 
GNT out.